<laughs> so Georg is recording, if I had to guess. Somebody who pushed the button. Um, I have a few things for folks. Uh, so let's see, our Google season of docs was not accepted. So this was the one where we were taking a look, Georg, if you recall, we were looking at trying to improve documentation. So I got an email and this is the first year on the pilot program for Google season of docs and they had over 200 applications and they accepted 50, five zero this year. So I think they're just trying to run it tightly. Um, so anyway, uh, that is that. Um, please keep in mind Google Summer of Code students are on this call. So, um, but the Google Summer of Code, uh, like final request for, for students kind of to fill the slots is tomorrow. So, but I think that's fairly well, uh, moving along fairly well. So that's number two. Any questions on the Google things for me so far? All right. No, we, I think we can say that we have made decisions. Yeah, we have made decisions and they will be uploaded to the Google system tomorrow or sucked into the Google system tomorrow. I'm not sure how it works. <laughs> yeah, and then Google will announce it. And then Google does the announcement, fair enough. Um, cool, and then um, the Grace Hopper, so participating in Grace Hopper, this is for folks from Augur and Grimoire Lab. So there's that day of, day of kind of um, coding engagement or you know, coding activities at the beginning of Grace Hopper. I did get the application in and they had told me that it looks good and that they are, they'll know early May uh, as to how they're gonna move forward uh, and that's when perhaps from folks, if you're going from Grimoire Lab or if anybody from Augur is going, uh, we can kind of formalize what that day would look like. And I don't, I don't know what a day is. I don't know if a day is four hours or a day is eight hours. Um, so more to come a little bit on that. So just putting that out there. And then a lot of outreach things today. And then um, the fourth thing was the community bridge application. That was in, and I took all the feedback from, uh, Sarah had given quite a bit of feedback. And that looks like it's gonna be accepted. I got an email that said it's accepted, <laughs> more to come shortly. Uh, so that's good. Uh, and I'll share that with everybody once we get officially into the communitybridge.org site. Um, so slowly but surely moving forward on that one. And I think, remember how I'm, I'm really not 100% sure what's going on with Community Bridge, but uh, hopefully things will reveal themselves as, uh, as we move forward with that. So that's good news. Um, and then my fifth thing, I don't know how you're doing on notes. Community Bridge, oh good. Um, and then the fifth thing was we have an organizing group for Chaos Con in San Diego. Uh, I think everybody, if you haven't filled out the doodle poll, if you were on that list for helping organize Chaos Con in San Diego, uh, I'll take a look at it probably right after this meeting and see what time works for everybody. Uh, so just suffice it to say for everybody who's not helping organize, we're doing a Chaos Con in um, San Diego the day before um, the Open Source Summit North America. And anyway, that's it. So we just have, we have an organizing committee just willing to put our heads together uh, to think about what that day would look like. So that's it. So we're just trying to find a time. So those are my five quick hits. Season of Docs, Summer of Code, Grace Hopper, uh, the other one, Community Bridge, and the chaos con thing. So uh, does anybody have any questions on that? I think we're getting kind of full on outreach stuff, but any comments on that? Good. Okay, cool. Um, if anybody also has anything else kind of on the radar that they think we should be participating in, that would be great. I have just let me know and we can kind of move forward on those things as well. This seems to be something that we're doing a little bit more, which is on the outreach side of things. Uh, 
and I'm happy to keep that ball rolling. Um, so I was hoping, Sean, are you on? I'm here. Sean is here. So I was hoping, Sean, that um, my one agenda item is that you could give people kind of an update as to what's happening with risk these days, because we've had fairly small group of people and it sounds, it feels like it's starting to kind of get some momentum. I think it is, yeah. And so to put you on the spot, if you could kind of summarize what's going on for folks. So there are a couple of threads that are happening um, with risk right now. And let me just uh, pull out notes from yesterday. The, the first thread is we've had a lot of, uh, the threads are security, safety critical systems, and how we address those questions with both metrics and possibly other other mechanisms. Just give me one sense where it is. There's my notes from yesterday. I just updated some things. So th the first the first thing is that there are some things related to risk that are interesting both to, to other working groups. So understanding the sustainability of a community is, is something risk is interested in. They call that business you know, risk, the risk that the project will stop to stop existing. And then uh, when the project stops existing, we will no longer have support. And, and so that's a concern. Um, and, and there's also a sort of a wish to explicitly express in some way, uh, projects intended support window for a particular release. So in some cases, like the Zephyr project, they will state explicitly how long the release is going to be supported for. And there are these, I guess, these two considerations on risk that are, that are a little bit different than the considerations in other working groups. Not, not completely, but just a little bit. In, in the risk on that? Yeah. So, um, the di uh, the a release is it about how long the community will support? Is it trying to reveal that a particular yes. release? Yes. Okay. So thinking about so if I'm a for example a, a hospital or a medical center and I'm using open source and I'm choosing open source packages, knowing that the version that I choose, which I may create dependencies on, will be supported by the community for X period of time. Uh, so stating that that policy explicitly is something that is that's of great interest in the risk in the risk community. How do you how would you get that data? In some in some cases, the projects state that somewhere, but not in a specified file. So one of the recommendations for that sort of metric would be either that we possibly include it in badging, and I'll I'll talk about badging in a minute. The, and, the, and the other way would be that we have some kind of file, like a dot support file okay. or something that would indicate uh, the general support horizon policy for a project. So when there's a formal release, uh, it's going to be supported for X periods of, periods of time. I'm curious um, as to how, do other people see a lot of projects state these kind of things? For anybody on the call? I've never even heard of such a thing. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I think, so that's, that's the two in the, in the, so there's a producer, there's what, what um, I call the, the project itself. So the project producing software are, are one dimension and then the consumers who are using that software would be another dimension. Now, in some cases, many cases, the other, projects or the places that our open source work is consumed is in other open source projects. But there are in, in, in the medical uh, economy and in safety critical systems, there are end users that are corporations who incorporate their software or open source software into a, a, an environment. I call that the consumer side versus the producer side. Uh, another word that's come up in the risk discussion is to refer to that as operations. So if you think about the Equifax breach, the issue there was open source operations and a, a disconnection between the community and the patching of struts. So knowing 
helping helping organizations that are not open source contributors or, or technology companies consume open source in a way where they have some mechanisms, metrics, or practices that, that they can use to understand where they sit with regards to, to being up to date, I, I think is, is, that's a conversation that's happening in the risk group that I think is, um, it's distinct from the conversations that we've had in the other working groups. And that's- but Those are, are those two different things? One is the indicator of long-term support and another is like an indicator that there's been a new release? Yes. Okay. Yes. And if there's a, and, and so the, the, those two different things actually come into play at two different points in the supply chain. The statement about support distance, you know, how long will a release go until it reaches end of life? That's on the purchasing acquisition procurement part. So IT organizations that use open source are looking for that indicator when they make decisions about what to use. The, then the questions about awareness and metrics with regards to patching and current releases, which if, you can, if we think about it from our perspective as open source folk, we, we know that it's just good practice to stay up to date with security patches, but those, those practices aren't as widespread in folks who don't live and breathe open source. And so while they one can solve the other, I think you have the sort of a legal fiduciary set of questions with regards to the support window that would be declared and the sort of security currentness questions that are that are separate in a way is a support window just a release calendar no it's it's if i'm purchasing software and that's how the purchasing or procurement folks in a corporation think about this right i want to know that that's going to the community is committed to supporting whatever release i start with for some period of time. And what that means and, and how we interpret that is something that probably has to be negotiated in the context of the fact that there are frequent new releases and helping to educate folks who are not open source active, but use these use our products on how to keep their patching current so that, that they are, that, that that procurement question isn't really relevant and so I don't think the procurement question is relevant for them, for the money folks and the legal folks making what they consider to be good decisions. And the, the security patching and staying current question is really, a, those are security risk okay. indicators. And they, they coexist and have some conflicting um, dimensions to them, right? Because okay. why do I care about the support window if I'm staying current on all the security patches? But there's really two different parts of an organization that are asking these questions. Okay. Um, so the versioning seems like it would be easier to get. Yeah, uh, for sure. A support, I just have never heard of a community, well, a lot of communities actively guaranteeing support. Right. And, and, and so that is, um, and I haven't either. So I think part of, part of what chaos may help with on this, on this side is, is, um, giving those folks indicators that we trust that kind of say the same thing. So it would be like a look and look, look backwards as a representation to look forward. I mean, that's, that would be about it. Exactly. Well, I think also um, uh, sort of helping those organizations have tools that they can use to know how far behind they are, if they, if they could scan the packages that are installed in their ecosystem and know which pieces of software that are running in operations have security holes that would be patched with upgrades. I think- Yeah, that, I, mean, I agree with that. I feel like there's yeah. two different conversations. That one seems yeah. relatively straightforward. Right, so it's, it's educating, I think there's, so part of it is educating IT and procurement. Okay. Uh, about these indirect indicators, which is something that, that is part, partly, I think, something we can do. Okay. And I think the other thing is giving the, the IT folks inside of those organizations tools to maintain awareness. And, and there are vendors like Black Duck who do things like this um, <clears throat> already. Um, and then we kind of talked about open source. So that's kind of that part of the discussion. Okay. Uh, and then, I mean, there was a lot, but 
maybe just the most significant other discussion I think people would be interested in is for safety critical systems, there's, there's criteria that we're looking that are being sought with regards to testing and community robustness as well. And some of the things that are sought by the security critical or the safety critical systems uh, ecosystem that are concerned about risk are handled to some extent by badging, which is already part of the Linux Foundation's the separate program outside of chaos. And we talked about yesterday, uh, and, and it's come up before, Jessica Wilkerson's really kind of kept this, this separation between the people consuming and producing open source in front of us from the very beginning. She's with the Linux Foundation. I, I don't know if she's on the call because I'm looking at my notes. Um, so to, to so the badging, as you all, many of you may know, have a set of criteria. And if you meet like the basic badging criteria for CII, then you've checked off all of some 66 boxes. And then you get to silver and gold. There's additional boxes that you need to check off. And for risk, some of the, and, and you can show your progress towards silver or gold by percentage. For risk, there are some discrete line items that probably we would say, okay, well, we're gonna, we might provide a metric about whether this line item is checked and we might provide a, ver a piece of a, a, me a metric definition that verifies the, that that box is actually checked. You know, but, it make, but it makes sense to try to have um, chaos and or auger and or grimoire lab try to go through the badging process like yeah, I, mean, I think I think I think that would make a ton of sense, right? <laughs> well, just because um, it would do a couple of things. One, it was obviously <laughs> like set us up against the badging process, and it would probably help reveal like what's in the badging process. Yeah, like, really, for sure. Yeah, and there's there's um, I I think there's some elements in the badging process. That we're gonna try to get Dave Mueller on a call. He's okay, the person responsible for the badging program. So, yes. And it is some things like, I think it was 50% of code needs to be covered by testing is the gold badge level. And okay. for safety critical systems, that's gotta be 100% or pretty, I mean, pretty darn close to it. Um, safety critical systems are, they generally deterministic in the sense that you can get close to 100% coverage. Okay. And there are people who are active in that community who could say something about that more in, generally, but I know when I was in pacemakers, uh, we had to have 100% coverage. In, in my mind, I don't know what other people think, but because like the way the chaos structure or the chaos project is structured, we have the metrics component, which is kind of technology agnostic, right? And then we have two pieces of open source, more than two, but pieces of open source technology that um, play a role, obviously, in the deployment of those metrics. Um, do you think the chaos project would go through badging or, you know, just the pieces of technology like Augur? So the, the chaos, the chaos project is, I have to look at what the, all the questions are, mm -hmm. um, but, but I would assume more sensible to hone in. Some of them have to do with soft, software specifically and under the chaos project. The work, the, the repositories that are badged um, have software. So I think if we had Augur and the Warlab, which are the two active pieces of software um, badged, then we could, and I have to look into it, I'm not an expert, but I would think that, that we could check all the boxes to get all of chaos badged if the pieces of us that were software were badged. It seems okay. like you're I can, I can chime on in that as well. Please well, do. A lot of the projects are doing like Hyperledger and some of the other big ones is they get a badge for individual um, sub projects. So yeah. the way that that would apply to us is Grimoire Lab would get its own badge, Augur would get its own badge. And then we as Chaos can still, or we don't, I don't think we have to do it at the work group level, but the Chaos metric side can get its own badge. So we have three okay. badges and for the metric side, because we don't have a software artifact, some of the metrics just don't apply. And we can just say, 
not applicable. Okay. But there are still a lot of good criteria that are about the governance and how the um, project is set up that I know we do a lot of the things already, but there might be a few criteria that we can actually improve on. Okay, so do you think a, uh, like a course of action would be to ask the software projects to think about this mm -hmm. without <laughs> requiring anything, of course, but uh, and then from there, the chaos project, Georg, or do you think these can kind of run in parallel? I think they can all run in parallel. Okay. Has anybody on this call been through CII badging in any way, shape, or form? No. I have helped craft the silver and gold level, and I've translated a lot of the criteria to German. <laughs> I mean, that counts. It's more than I've done, so... Um, so maybe we can put like the first, you know, the first small note in the, the notes. I'm sure you're doing that, Georg, but yes, there it's happening. Um, and, and really, again, from my perspective, it's two things. One is that it, it I think the badging is important for the projects in general. And then if risk is going to be using anything out of badging, I think this will shed light on what's in there <laughs> to be used. So that'd be cool. All right, great. Um, anything else, Sean? Super helpful. Thank you. Yeah, there were. There's a. I mean, a lot of things. We talked a lot about security uh, the past the past few weeks and trying to find you know proxies for making assessments about security and and proxies that would become that that would not end up causing the wrong kinds of behavior. So if we start to do things like provide metrics related to um, dependencies and security patching and um, process, for example, we could either give a false sense of security that, that a project is secure, or we could motivate people to sort of go through the motions of checking those boxes. So there's a certain understanding that when, if we create metrics and risks that are directly related to security, we need to be careful about just not motivating behavior that doesn't actually improve security. Say that again. Didn't well, for example, if we if we were to say um, instrument or create a metric that said all all pull requests or contributions of code on this project go through two reviews before they're merged, mm -hmm. and then that we use to indicate or be a proxy for some sense of oversight and process existing in an open source project and started using that as a metric, then what that could potentially motivate is projects to simply create those steps in their repositories without really doing any authentic reviewing. And I see. So, the, so the trick is to, and I think this is the case in, in many areas, but especially with regards to security risk, we don't wanna create metrics that ultimately end up not being useful because they're quite easily gained. Okay. Yeah, it seems like that's that perpetual question around it's, gaming. Yeah, it's it's, and I think it's, you know, because security is such a high, there's a lot of attention to it. Um, there's maybe a greater sense of wanting to be careful. That okay. Yeah. You know. Okay. Totally fair. Um, good. Well, um, are the, yeah, I think you did post it. I think we'll start recording those meetings if that's all right with you i don't think we've been yeah. them lately yeah uh, of okay. course okay sounds good um anything else sean no okay cool thank you that was that was good i just wanted to kind of get that because i think all groups now are off and running we have no more capacity for any other groups so that's it. Yeah. If anybody wants a metric, then find a home. <laughs> Shall be no more working groups created. All right, done. Um, so D and I, do you have any updates? I did um, did Hyperledger join this week? I know that they had expressed interest. We had a very small meeting yesterday. Basically, Sean was there. Sarah and I met. <laughs> um, there's not much uh, new things. New was that uh, the Linux Foundation is thinking about 
putting together a survey template for its project with uh, DNI questions to assess DNI within projects. And can you say that there? So the Linux Foundation is putting together a survey that the projects can deploy for understanding diversity and inclusion in their projects. Okay. And Sarah said she would like to pilot or get feedback on this survey once they have something from our group and work with us to refine it. Okay. Am I capturing this right in the minutes? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, did she give a timeline on it at all, or is it just? No, it's something that their diversity, sustainability, and inclusion um, group is thinking about and is kicking off. Okay. Would it be something like um, a reusable survey? Was that what it was? That would be a series of X number of questions or almost like, it could almost be like a, like the badge that it wouldn't be questions, but it would things be things that you could report. Yeah. Okay. And they will take the OpenStack survey um, and look at others that have been run as a way to inform what questions they should ask. Okay. Did they talk about how the, or did Sarah talk about how the projects would actually deploy the survey? And no, how they did not talk about, about those details. Okay. Um, okay. You know, kind of that back end process. How do you actually deploy it, capture the data, and then represent it back to the communities in meaningful ways? And then probably the, you know, what do you do <laughs> other than just returning the data back to people? How do we actually take action on it in some way? Okay. Um, well, I'll, I should be there next week. Sorry, I had a. I had a final right then. <laughs> oh yeah, no worries. Right at that moment. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, let's see. Any other Andy value or Don oh. with comment? Silence. Well, um, I'll speak up very quickly um, with with value a uh, reminder to everybody um, calls every Friday morning. We've had really nice turnout last week. Um, we, we had a new person turn up uh, a man named Johan Lineker, who's a who's a PhD candidate in Sweden who's looking at open source value. Uh, he's going to be doctor known as Dr. Value once he graduates. Um, right. And um, we are getting close to having a working instance of um, value metrics um, based on Augur. Very excited about that. Maybe we'll get that this week or next week. And the other thing that we're doing is um, we are thinking a little bit about grants and, and doing a, some exploration to see if we can reach out and get some grant money to help our activity with the value group. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you. And then for our common working group, we did not meet last week. So we do have a meeting on Thursday. So okay. if people want to join us, talk about metrics, that would be cool. I'll be there. I just, sent, I just sent an email to the chaos mailing list with details about the meeting. Okay, thanks. Um, is that everyone? Risk, value, common. And I, oh, evolution. Sean, do you have anything? I don't think you met this week. See, this is too many. <laughs> it's far too many. <laughs> Sean, anything? Yeah, I don't. I don't. Um, we didn't meet this week, so. Okay. 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 Um, I guess then, if we're through the working groups, I'll kind of also encourage the working groups to continue to reflect on the release that's intended to come up this summer. Um, it's not critical that it, you know everything that you're thinking about needs to be released. I think the goals on the release is that you identify the focus areas with the goals, questions, and metrics, and then provide details 
on the metrics. So there's a detail on the metrics that are actually being released. I don't know if anybody has questions on that. This doesn't have to be a massive set by any means. Uh, but again, Gary, do you remember our timing on that, June? We wanted to have the metrics locked down and ready for review at the end of June okay. so that we can revise it in July and officially release at the end of July so that we have some time before the Open Source Summit in North America. Okay. So I'll ask all working groups if you could, maybe always on your agenda from here until, until forever, uh, put that spreadsheet on your, on your agenda to reflect on that. Um, we can put that spreadsheet in the, did you put it in the minutes, Gary? I'll do that. Please continue to reflect on Okay, so that is in the minutes, that spreadsheet, which you have all seen before. Um, okay, that's it for me on working groups. Um, anything else people have on their mind? Thoughts? Nothing? I am super yeah. excited that the new stack is releasing a contributed blog post about the DNI working group. And next week we have a interview scheduled for their podcast to talk about the DNI working group. That falls again onto the category of outreach. Do you have, um, are there any like links yet for anything or? No. Okay. I think they're releasing the blog post sometime this week, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Okay. Cool. Got that in there. All right. Well, if all folks are good, I am good. Um, the remaining agenda this week is there is, uh, there's, there's no evolution meeting this week, if I recall. Common has one as Don pointed out, and Andy has one, or I should say value has one, as Andy pointed out. Okay, cool. All right, if there's nothing else, I am good. And I assume everybody else is good. We're good. All right, have a great week, everybody. You too, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye.